How's it going, Diablo fans? So the first week of the gauntlet finishes tomorrow and we're gonna have a new gauntlet tomorrow. And so I decided to put my updated build guide for my Arclash Teleport Lightning Spear build out there. It is fairly similar to the other players out there, but I play like a little bit different here. I play a different um, amulet aspect. I play the overwhelming currents while everybody else seems to be like doing the ancient flame. So I really like my version like a lot more because I have like a lot more lightning spears and I just feel like it plays a little bit better. But, you know, this just might be my personal feeling. Anyway, I just, you know, decided to put out this guide once again. It's fairly similar to my last guide I already posted before the gauntlet. But this one is actually gauntlet approved. You know, I was able to get 1 million points without using any exploited shrine snapshots here. And you know what? I know it is, like, not the best score. I know there's people who do better. But I am also, like, honest, I'm not, like, the best player in this game. I am not so fast with interaction. And I also have like quite a bit of latency because my internet connection is actually pretty bad so for me this is actually a pretty good achievement and i'm confident that this build will also help a lot of you guys out there to reach the gauntlet scores you want so I want to talk a little bit about what drives this build and how we can teleport so fast and how we can take everything out automatically. So first of all, the aspect with the fast movement and the infinite teleports is an interaction between the teleport enchantment, the fireball enchantment and the implicit on our boots, which gives us 1.2 seconds reduction in evade cooldowns whenever we use a skill. So the way that it works is there's actually two different things getting into this cooldown reduction on our evade. First of all, it's going to be the Arklish. So what we're going to do is in this build is we're going to hold right mouse button or whatever key you want to bind it to. And we're going to hold it all the time. So we, I have Arklish on there. I'm going to hold right mouse button pretty much for eight minutes straight through the entire gauntlet. I'm not going to like let go on that button. And what it does is... We have a high attack speed and it basically permanently casts Arklish. So every single Arklish then contributes into the evade cooldown reduction. So basically every skill we do gives us 1.2 seconds reduction on the evade cooldown. So technically like every three or four Arklish we would have like the 100% reduction on our cooldown. So this is the part of how to achieve permanent teleport here to move around fast. And then we also need to do damage. So for damage, what are we doing here? Well, we use unstable currents and lightning spears. So we basically put a lot of damage into our conjurations from Paragon board and also like um, skill levels into like lightning spears. So our lightning spears do like a lot of damage and can kill mobs on their own without any issues. And then we have the unstable currents together with the recently buffed uh, um, aspect of overwhelming currents which is just going to spawn like a crazy amount of lightning spears which is then going to buff our conjuration mastery which is then again going to buff the lightning spear so it's kind of a self synergy system there so we have like times between like 15 and 25 lightning spears out so it's really like um, at times giving us more than a hundred percent damage buff but on average i would say we are at around somewhere around like 15 lightning spears i would say which would be like a 90 percent damage buff here just from conjuration mastery alone so and then we have one more interaction we want to have permanent unstable currents and that we can achieve with using the hectic vampiric power on our boots because remember we're just holding right mouse which is casting arklish all the the time and what happens is the hectic vampiric power is going to reduce our ultimate cooldown by up to four seconds whenever we cast like five basic skills so well if you play close attention it says it's going to reduce the cooldown of a random skill so that's why we want to have no skills on cooldown but unstable currents when we're not having a channeling shrine so this is a very important to be disciplined so you don't want to spam your skills because just you can outside of a channeling shrine. Because what happens is the hectic will not reduce your unstable currents. And if you run out of unstable currents, you're going to slow down significantly. So you want to really have just one active cooldown most of the time, which is unstable currents. So your hectic can properly reduce the cooldown on unstable currents. If you spam your flame shield, your ice blades and your teleport all the time, you're not going to get the results I'm getting you're going to fail because the hectic is not going to reduce the cooldown on your unstable currents on every single like fifth cast because you know it can hit the teleport it can hit the ice blades and it can hit the flame shield and that's not what we want so 
The exception to this rule is basically when we have a channeling shrine because we have infinite cooldowns anyway. So while you have a channeling shrine, you can use all skills and spam then however you want. Just don't forget to teleport and it's not a big deal. But as soon as your channeling shrine is expired, don't use cooldowns other than unstable currents. So that was the pretty long explanation about this build. Um, I feel like it's important here to understand the synergies and to understand how to actually achieve the infinite teleport so you can try it out on your own. Because, you know, if you're just watching a video and it's not like in explained in detail how it works and they just tell you, yeah, you just use teleport enchantment and fireball and it's going to work, you know, you might just not figure out how it works. So I like try to like explain it in the very best way so you can actually understand the interaction the entire they will work and as always you can find the links to the specific sections of this guide in the description down below you will also find the link to the planner and to all my other build guides now and now without further ado let's go into the skill tree Taking a look at the skill tree, we max Arclash with Enhanced Arclash and Glinting Arclash for the little bit of extra cooldown reduction. Also, Arclash is our main single target damage spell here, and it really hits like very hard. And also, together with the Pain Gorgeous Gloves, the Lightning Spears are gonna mark all mobs, and as soon as we hit a random mob with Arclash, basically all the mobs are gonna die. This actually helps a lot. I tried doing this build without Pain Gorgeous, and you leave mobs behind because the um, Pain Gorgeous basically gives you like the little bit of extra like control over mobs dying because every mob is going to be marked so basically you just need to hit a mob with Arklish every three seconds or so and it's going to kill everything even if you left it behind and that's the big advantage of playing pain gorgeous gloves here then we max out fireball with enhanced fireball and destructive fireball this is just going to give us a little bit of extra aoe and damage so i highly recommend picking these um, we max out um, fireball because this is one of our primary damage sources we want mobs to die to explode in a fireball because fireball is resetting our teleport enchantment together with the implicit on our boots then we put four points into teleport here and um I cannot find a fifth point simply, but you know it's not a big deal. Um, we still have like a lot of teleport points here. Um, we don't need flame shield. If you don't have um, Shaco, um, you would put one point into flame shield here, but I leave it open. Then um, we put three points into glass cannon, one point into elemental attunement. Then we put one point into hydra, one into enhanced hydra, one into summoned hydra. So here's the thing about hydra, right? If you don't have Shaco or if you like want to like distribute those points somewhere else go ahead and do so but i feel like hydra is useful so whenever i see like a mob still standing and i'm sure that i'm not going to attack or kill him anymore i just drop like a hydra somewhere and i know the hydra will finish up this mob so really that's why i use hydra in this build i use it rarely but i use it sometimes and it really just gives you like you know an extra couple of thousand points here and there so not a big deal, but if you're like min-maxing, it can really help. Then one point into line the elements, one point into protection. Really just for the barrier here, um, because we still have some barrier synergies, but we don't really need the defensive layer here at all. Um, also, it helps you to like not take so much health damage um, and lose the healthy status here. Then we put one point into Ice Blades, one into Enhanced Ice Blades, one into Summoned Ice Blades. So we rarely use Ice Blades. We mainly use it once for the Talrasha stack. And then if we have a Channeling Shrine, we can use it. So if we have a Channeling Shrine, we have Unstable Currents up all the time. And we can actually use those Ice Blades with a cooldown of like two seconds. Um, and it gives you a little bit of extra damage here and there. I would not use it overly um, just use it like when it makes sense, right? If you're like speed teleporting, don't use it. But if you're like standing still for like a split second, you can just summon an ice blade. It gives you a little bit of extra damage here and there. It gives you a little bit of extra cooldown reduction. Um, pretty much it. But you don't really need to resummon it at all if you don't feel like it's um, beneficial to your playstyle. Then um, we max out Lightning Spear with Enhanced Lightning Spear and Invoke Lightning Spear. So Lightning Spear is really doing a lot of damage in this build and it's primarily killing all the mobs, right? So we, we kill everything with Lightning Spear here. So that's why we max it out. And then Conjuration Mastery, we max it out and you want to have plus three on your amulet. So in this build, like we really highly abuse Conjuration Mastery. We also use the aspect of Overwhelming Currents here on our amulet because it has recently been buffed. So it gives you like a 45% 
percent chance, which is pretty nuts. And we have like between 15 and 25 conjurations up. So this is really like an extremely strong buff. It gives us over 100% damage increase at times. So highly recommend get this on your amulet. And then one point into Inner Flames, three points into Devouring Blaze here. Um, we don't really have any direct burning um, damage. We have burning damage on our Construct and we have burning damage from Hydra and we have burning damage from Flame Shield. So we really just use this on bosses. So basically if you um, fight a boss, just run into the boss, activate Flame Shield, and we just get the extra damage. That's all we need it for. We don't need it on trash mobs. This is solely for bosses. And then we put one point into Static Discharge, three into Shocking Impact. This just gives us a little bit of extra damage for our Lightning Spear. So imagine like a Lightning Spear hits a mob and it does like 95% damage. This is going to be the last 5%, which is going to kill the mob, then spawn a Fireball, then reset our Teleport cooldown. So really, we have the extra skill points to spare in this, so we might as well play Shocking Impact here. It also has recently been buffed. Then we just put one point into ball lightning and one into enhanced ball lightning just for the little bit of extra boss burst during unstable currents here. And then one point into causing currents, three point into conduction just for the little bit of extra movement speed here again. One point into unstable currents, one into prime unstable currents and one into supreme unstable currents. We want to use unstable currents 100% of the time. Technically, you don't need Supreme Unstable Currents. We don't really care about Crackling Energy. But it, again, it's like a nuance of extra damage here. And then, last but not least, Asus Ferocity. Again, Asus Ferocity is still bugged. It works for all damage. And it works together with our Aspect of Ancient Flame to give us a very high attack speed breakpoint here. For the skills, we use Teleport. Teleport, you don't want to overly use um, you don't want to like spam um, teleport and evade teleport so teleport enchantment all the time because if you have a little bit of latency it might actually teleport you back if you like teleport too fast so mainly use your teleport from the teleport enchantment this one here you use if you want to travel like far range so for example in the first week of the gauntlet use this to jump over the bridges right but don't use this for regular movement like it really slow it doesn't slow you down but so if you're using a cooldown and then the hectic can actually reset teleport and unstable currents if you're not using this cooldown hectic can only reset unstable currents so in an in a perfect scenario if you don't have channeling shrine up you don't want to use teleport because you want to spend all your hectic procs on unstable currents right so just to like travel long distances to jump over obstacles where the evade teleport cannot go over you use teleport or if you're like really out of everything you can still use teleport but try not to spam teleport as crazy right so then unstable currents you want to have it up 100 of the time this is launching our lightning spears and the lightning spears are what's doing damage in our build flame shield we mainly really just use for um make bosses burn and kill them faster hydra if you're getting overwhelmed with the speed or the build, you don't need to use the Hydra at all. Hydra is super min-maxed here. We don't need this skill slot here anyway. So you can always like put up an Hydra. If you see you miss the mob, just plant an Hydra and the Hydra will kill it. You can also use it. It gives you a 6% extra damage together with Conjuration Mastery. But if you're getting overwhelmed, just skip the Hydra. You don't need to use it at all. It's not necessary. Then Ice Blades, um, we use it for the Tarasha stack mainly, but if you have a channeling shrine, you can use Ice Blades a lot if you want to. If it doesn't like slow you down significantly, you know, you might just drop like three or four Ice Blades while you are on a channeling shrine because you can still teleport, you will still have unstable currents, and it's going to give you extra damage on bosses and also regular mobs. So if you have like three or four ice blades following you, that's going to be like an extra 20 to 30% damage somewhere around that. So really, if you have a channeling shrine, mix it in. If you don't have a channeling shrine, don't press ice blades, okay? You don't have a channeling shrine and you do ice blades, your hectic is gonna reset ice blades and your hectic is not gonna reset unstable cooldown, uh, unstable currents. Well, let's just say it's like 50-50, right? So whenever you put ice blades on cooldown while you are relying on hectic to reset your unstable currents cooldown while you're not on a channeling shrine, don't press ice blades. Just let me say this one more time, only press ice blades while you have a channeling shrine, period. 
Then Arklish, this is our primary attack ability. You want to have it on mouse too. At least I feel like it's the best on uh, to have it on mouse too. And I basically hold mouse to the entire time. I just hold the right mouse button and I solely move with teleport and teleport enchantment. I don't really move with my left click at all. I just use Arklish. So this triggers Hectic and Hectic resets the cooldown on unstable currents. Unstable current spawns the lightning spears, and that is what's keeping the build going. Then for the enchantment, as already known, this is like the current meta, right? We use teleport enchantment and fireball. It's not really a bug, I think. Um, I'm pretty sure they're going to change it after, you know, the season. But basically, if you kill something, a fireball enchantment will trigger the um, teleport charge reduction from um, the boots. So on the boots, we have the implicit Whenever we do an attack, it's going to reduce the cooldown. And when we kill an enemy, it's going to spawn a fireball. And that's basically going to count towards this. Um, so that's how we like can teleport all the time. So this is just this fireball teleport meta here. Um, you kind of have to accept it. If you want to go fast, this is pretty much the only enchantments you can play at this stage of the game. So let's go over the items. Um, we want to play Shaco here for the extra Arklish damage. But if you don't have Shaco, you can just play a regular helmet with all stats, intelligence, cooldown reduction, and it doesn't even matter, plus three or plus four lightning spear most likely would be the best stat to have here. Um, you can also play Godslayer Crown. Those are both fine. Um, the build will work without Shaco. You will do a little bit of less damage without Shaco, but it definitely works without here, right? Then for your um, chess piece, you want to play Raymond of the Infinite. Um, the stats on Raymond here do not matter at all. So really, like, obviously try to get high damage rolls. But we're just using it for the um, for the pulling mobs together and mainly for the plus two ranks to Glass Cannon and the damage stats and the intelligence. So we just want more damage here. We play a pure Glass Cannon build, so this is the perfect chess piece for us. Then we use Pain Gorgeous Gauntlet here. Um, this just gives us... Uh, extreme boost in boss damage and it also helps us to kill mobs which are far away so basically if you don't play pain gorgeous gauntlets mobs are going to survive i tested it multiple times um, maybe you can get it done without pain gorgeous i couldn't get it done without it um, it felt much better with the gloves to me so what happens is lightning spears basically mark all the mobs and the mobs then get marked and so as, soon, as long as you hit like a mob every three seconds with Arklash, it's going to instantly die because it had been the Pain Gorgeous Gauntlet mark. And it just makes the build so much better. Like you just kill more mobs, which are even out of sight while playing Pain Gorgeous. Then uh, we play T-Bot's Will. Um, I don't think you even need the damage in the Gauntlet. So you could also play Utility Aspect if you wanted to. I still play it here because I have the 40% extra damage. It especially helps with taking out bosses faster. And um, just focus on the 40% here. All the other stats do not matter in this build whatsoever. Then for the boots, we basically have to get the implicit here. So the implicit attacks reduce evades cooldown by 1.2 seconds. That is what gives us the whole chain reaction with the teleport enchantment and the infinite teleport cooldowns. Then you want to have shrine buff duration, biggest role possible. You want to have plus four ranks to teleport and you want to have intelligence. So basically take these boots, switch out flame shield for intelligence and you have the perfect pair. And then we want to put the hectic aspect on here. Every single buff like three seconds really works. 3.4 is not the best one. It pretty much works all right. I would like to have a four second one, but I'm too lazy to get one now. So again, every single buff three seconds is okay. And that would pretty much carry you with infinite teleport. Then... For our um, weapon, we use Moonrise here. Um, Moonrise gives us a little bit of extra attack speed, gives us a little bit of extra movement speed, and gives us additional basic skill damage. So I feel like it's a very nice aspect. I know there's people who are using the aspect of Ancient Flame on the amulet to reach the attack speed breakpoints a different way. 
I feel like that is not the best way to do it. I feel like you're wasting potential on your amulet, but that is kind of personal preference. I just like to play it with Moonrise here. If you don't want to play Moonrise for whatever reason and you want to play Ancient Flame on your amulet, you can do that. Then you would play the accelerating aspect on your weapon here. And for the weapon stats, just as always, just get all stats intelligence and two damage stats here. On our focus, we put the um, rapid aspect here for more basic skill attack speed. And then we want to have basic skill attack speed, critical strike chance, cooldown reduction and intelligence. So this is a perfect piece pretty much, except for the rolls. But don't get overly excited on the basic skill attack speed roll here, the 3%. Well, yes, they do matter like a little bit, but also it's not going to be a major difference here. So this is a pretty good piece for this build. And then we get Tarasha's Ring. All the stats on it do not really matter at all except for the cooldown reduction and the 15% um, damage roll here. All the other stats are irrelevant in this build. Then for our next ring, we get Ancient Flame here. So again, as I already said, some people like to play Ancient Flame on the amulet. I don't like to do this. I like to get my attack speed breakpoints the um, regular way here. And you want to have a critical strike chance. Um, lightning damage, damage to stun or damage to like, you know, critical strike damage, vulnerable damage, just some kind of damage. And, you know, you can get maximum life. Again, in Gauntlet, you don't even need it, but I don't have so many rings, so I just use the ones with max life here. And then, last but not least, on our amulet, we want to have overwhelming currents. So, I know, again already said it like 15 million times now people play ancient flame i really enjoy having um this overwhelming currents on my amulet like you really get so many lightning spears and they give you like such a huge damage buff like it's like night and day to any other aspect i tried so i really really enjoy playing this on my amulet and then for the stats you want to have shrine buff duration cooldown reduction ranks of conjuration mastery and the last stats could probably either either be movement speed or uh, maximum intelligence um both work just fine um i have shock skill damage which is pretty useless but you know as you can see, I can even hit a million with these three out of four um, stats I'm having here. And as always, um, you can find the perfect stats and everything in the planner link in the description down below. So for the construct, I always start with the non-Uber version because you know what? There's like so many stones. I ask no way I can grab the right stone and replace it live on a video. So we always start with the non-Uber version here. So we play Flash of Adrenaline for the extra damage, tactical support, so it has less cooldown, duration support, so it lasts longer, and initiative support, so the construct can actually teleport to you and give you a little bit more uptime on this ability. Then for the other one, we get Tempest here with arcing support, so it hits more mob with burning support, so... We at least get a little bit of extra burning damage, but also versus bosses, we get more burning damage. And pretty much the same goes for efficiency support. Again, 15% crit chance. This also pretty much works on bosses only. It works on other mobs, but the uptime is going to be minimal on bosses. You have a good uptime on this. And then if you want to, um, if you have the Uber stones, well, again, we replace them now. So what we do is we replace initiative support with Genesis. So this now becomes a 50% buff. And here we replace the arcing support with the um, Evanite. So we get the additional skill points. For the Paragon board, as already mentioned, this is as glass cannon as it gets, right? So we don't need any defenses whatsoever for the gauntlet. So we're going to pick in the first board. We do our Elementalist Glyph for the 15% extra damage. We just pick like the non first damage here. We don't even go for the Auras because we can actually save one note by doing this way and we don't need the Auras at all. Then moving over to the next board is going to be the Enchantment Master. So we pick all the non fist damage here. We put in our Tactician to get even more non fist and also get the 25 Intelligence, which is actually 2.5% damage. Then we pick up a little bit of non fist damage here as well. And then we move over to the Enchantment Master. Um, this really helps us with the Teleport uh, Enchantment because it lowers the cooldown on the Teleport Enchantment a little bit. And it actually matters a lot. It's also a difference like night and day if you play enchantment master and again we don't really need any like you know super important notes in the paragon so we really have the 
whatever it is, extra 15 points here to travel all the way to Enchantment Master because this is the most important for us to keep our teleport cooldowns short. Then moving over to the next board, that is going to be the Elemental Summoner. We also pick this Glyph here. Then we put in our Conjurer Glyph here with 60 Intelligence, so our Lightning Spears do more damage. And um, this is pretty much just for the Intelligence here. And then we take the Elemental Summoner note. Um, it gives us 10% less cooldown, which doesn't matter at all. We just want the extra damage here, really. And um, then we pick up all the Attack Speed notes here. I know this is kind of like an unpopular choice, but this gives you like 9% extra Attack Speed. And as already talked about, like people like to waste their Amulet slot on Ancient Flame. I feel like we can get just get this 9% attack speed and this pretty much gives us like the 100% regular attack speed together with our other items here just fine. So I feel like this is a very good way of obtaining the extra attack speed. If you don't want to get this extra attack speed, you can for example get this Keeper of Flames, uh, Keeper of the Elements nodes and also get some extra non fist damage here if you want. Then Moving over to the next board, Ceaseless Conduit. We just use it for the Glyph slot, so we just put Destruction in here with 39 decks. Not more to talk about this one at all. Let's move over to the next board. That is going to be the Burning Instinct. Same story, just for the Glyph Socket. Um, this is a very efficient board to move through if you want to place like a low dexterity glyph here, as you can see. So we use Exploit here, really just for the extra um, damage buff here. And... Um, for the 40% damage, doesn't really matter at all, so we're just out for like the 10%. Then moving over to the next board, Searing Heat. Again, just for the Glyph slot, um, we put 60 Intelligence in here with the Enchanter Glyph. Um, again, if you want to modify the board slightly, you can definitely get this note here for another 10%, because Enchanter Glyph has been buffed. It's very, very strong now, but um, I feel like I don't want to use the three points here for the 20% extra non fist and then let's move over to the last board. That is going to be the Frigid Fate. So we pick up the Frigid Fate for the 30% damage buff. And we just slot in our Control Glyph here for the extra 20% increased damage to stunned enemies. So we have some extra um, changes here, and that is Control Changes. So I want to just talk a little bit about Controls here. Because this build can be exhausting if you don't set your controls properly. And it doesn't even work if you set your controls properly. So there's one settings. If you go to the um, options and you go to controls, there's a setting which is called combine move interact basic skill slot. So you want to deactivate this. Because if you activate this, you're basically going to get um, your left mouse button for move and basic skill and your right uh, and your right, right mouse button for another skill so if you deactivate this you get an extra basic skill slot as you can see here right so you get this extra slot you can bind it to a hotkey and um then you have interact and move and interact right so then you can choose move and interact on left mouse button so this basically gives you an extra skill slot because you cannot really use right and left mouse button at the same time. You cannot hold right mouse button and then also click with the left. I mean, you can do it, but it is going to be extremely exhausting. You don't want to do this at all. Also, um, again, I'm using Hydra now on the slot. You wouldn't need Hydra. You could also leave this slot um, completely open, but just don't use like left mouse. If you're playing on a controller, it's probably ex completely different. I have no clue about that. I'm just talking about PC now. So what now with controls? So you want to have controls which allow you to play efficiently. So as you can see, I have my evade teleport on E, right? So I don't have it on space. I have it on E because I want to basically use three buttons mainly. I have Q, W, and E. So I have E for my evade teleport, right? I have Q W for my regular teleport. And I use Q basically for ice blades. I just sometimes use it. And I have R for flame shield. So this is really the hotkeys I'm using here. And then, again, I have space for unstable currents now. Because I had evade on unstable currents before. Uh, I had evade on space bar before. And it was really, really exhausting. Like, literally, my fingers were hurting after, like, hitting the space bar, like, all the time. It just 
didn't feel right. So I really wanted to have like teleport on E. And you can probably also have it on W or on Q. Like I guess it depends on which finger you like like to use for this. You can also like, sp I mean, you can spam E, you can spam Q, you can spam W, no problem. But you don't want to spam space. Like it is exhausting. Like at least for me. So that's why I, I rebind it really for the gauntlet. I rebinded my keys to have my evade cooldown on a button which I can really permanently spam because you're just gonna spam like the E button like all the time. Really. So if I go on the dummies here right now, right, and I do multiple dummies. And as you can see, like um let's just wait. Okay, it doesn't even really work on dummies because they don't die. And just like notice. But um Anyway, so you want to have your, as you can see, like you want to spam like the E button because that is really like a button you can spam. And if you do it with space, you know, you will feel it. And also your keyboard is going to be um, thankful if you rebind those keys. So that's just my recommendation. Use like an easy key for like regular teleport and an easy accessible key for evade um, because you are going to be spamming evade like crazy. There you have it, that's my updated gauntlet Arklish build guide and it's gonna make you a million points and let's see what's the gauntlet going to be next week but I'm pretty sure it's gonna work just fine and thank you so much for watching and I see you guys in the next week's gauntlet.